All right, guys, here we are. Today we're gonna play a Dead by Daylight dating sim, Hooked on You. So um, I actually wanted to try to get out a Dead by Daylight video today for you guys. But since it's gonna take me a while to uh, uh, edit it and everything, and I'm trying to produce a video every Thursday, here we are. We're going to play this. We're gonna play this for you guys. And I have no clue what to expect. Um, I think this is a dating sim where you could still die and have to start over. So let's start. Before we start, what shall we call you? Call me Lola. I see uh, a settings. <coughs> You wake up on the beach, soaking wet, salt water stinging the inside of your throat as if you'd nearly drowned. Water falls from your mouth as you open it to gasp for air. You have no memory of what, of how you got here. In fact, you can only remember your own name, but not where you came from or a single fact about your life. Okay, I got amnesia. What do you do? What you do know is that Despite the outrageous beauty of the landscape around you, you feel incredibly sick to your stomach. It is beautiful. <coughs> wow, really went down the wrong pipe, huh? You need a minute, or can I go go on? <laughs> is this a narrator talking to me like this? <laughs> because I can give you a minute, we've got plenty of time, endless time really. Ocean, an eternity if you catch my drift. Is the ocean the narrator? Whoa, not now, ocean. Sorry, Lola. May I continue? Please go on. Okay, then. As I was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> As I was saying, you look down at your feet ankle deep in the crystal blue water of a newly arrived wave. As the water recedes back into the ocean, it reveals a grotesque discovery. That is disgusting. Yeah, that is pretty grotesque. A decomposing face stares up at you from beneath the sand. All you can do is vomit a stream of dark bile bugs, worms, and other ick. Questions race through your mind. Where are you? How did you get here? Who is behind this incredibly charming and well-spoken voice in your head? However, answers don't come easy. Your mind is completely blank. What will you do? Run, close your eyes, dig up that face. I'm gonna dig up that face, obviously. This is disgusting, but <laughs> you brush the sand away from the half buried human head and embed it in the ground before you. Oh, there's something in his mouth. There is no body, just this head. As you pick it up, flat flakes of skin fall on to the ground. The jaw falls open, revealing a gold coin sitting on the rotten tongue of the poor dead soul. Getting your hands dirty, I see. I like that. You're a take charge type. Nice! You examine the gold coin briefly, happily distracted from what has otherwise been an extremely confusing morning. The sun beats down on you, drying your clothes. You check your pockets. But they're empty. Plenty of room for a gold coin, you suppose. And so, you deposit it. <laughs> Why, that's a nice coin you've got there. What if you were to spend it right now? On what? No thanks. I'm gonna keep this. Look, I'm gonna level with you here. That coin you found, it's mine. I dropped it yesterday and I've been looking all over for it. I'm not giving it to you, strange voice. Dropped it into a dead person's mouth? Could you just give it back? No, I'm not giving this coin back. I reach my hand in some dead person's mouth to get it. No. Psst. Be that way then. Your mind doesn't have a chance to linger any longer on your current situation as you feel something soft bump into your feet. Oh. When you look down, you find a volleyball sitting in the sand there next to you. You stare down frozen. A voice calls out from behind you. The Huntress. Ah, oh, the Huntress. Little help, please. 
You turn around, and when you see what's waiting for you, your jaw just about hits the ground. She's gorgeous. <laughs> what do people call her? Dami Mommy? <laughs> the Wraith. Wait, they're all there right behind me? No way. All of them right behind me, just staring at me. This is kind of creepy. Okay. Oh, I love how uh, the Huntress is holding her hand out for me. <laughs> Four gorgeous monsters stand halfway between you and a well-tended volleyball court. Each of them oozes with undead energy, a magical aura reaching out and penetrating you via your eyes. <laughs> your heart begins to race curiosity, fear, desire. You can't help but stare at these casually dressed Let's call them killers. I don't know. Not to be judgmental, but that's just the energy they put out there. <laughs> so many competing feelings rush through your mind at once that you are completely paralyzed. They made them look, uh, yeah, sizzling. <laughs> Hello. There are weird days, and then there's this. All you can do is look down at the ball and back up at the monstrous lineup of, well, literal monsters. Sexy. <laughs> sexy ass monsters, though. <laughs> what do you do? Toss it back, kick it back, say no thanks, say nothing, do nothing. I'm gonna toss it back. You bend down and grab the ball. It's warm from sitting in the sand on a beautiful day. When you give the ball a toss, it arcs beautifully through the air and lands right in the Huntress's hands. Not bad, stranger. Yeah, if I kicked it, I, would, I probably would have angered one of them. Huntress's muscles ripple <laughs> as she grips it in her hand. You look her up and down and consider what it might be like to be held tightly in those strong arms. Warm, perhaps. Maybe a little sweaty. <laughs> but that's okay. It's natural. <laughs> Try hard much? <laughs> oh. Oh. The spirit's mad at me. I might die from her. They're speaking directly to you, but you still can't bring yourself to reply. You're entranced. When you snap out of it, you realize that everyone has gone back to the volleyball court. Uh, alone again, you look across the beach at these strange residents who casually bat a volleyball back and forth, happily ignoring your intrusion onto their private beach. Should you be frightened, worried, excited? I did refer to them as killers, not to give too much away. But at the same time, damn, they are looking very appealing in their own way. <laughs> and nobody so much as lifted a blood-soaked finger in your direction. Don't be scared, Lola. You were made for this. The ocean is very ominous. And I do like that it has the Aurora Borealis in the ocean. <laughs> well, geez, if the spooky ocean voice says not to be scared, I'm sure it's all going to work out. With no good reason not to, you decide to head over and see what happens next. Oh yeah, I'm going to see what happens next. I'm gonna die, aren't I? <laughs> I would love to die on the first try. It seems like you derailed the volleyball game just by showing up. Oh man. You derailed the game just by showing up, nitwit. Oh, he's mad at me. I'm gonna die. And I guess you're also a nitwit. Look, it's best to just go with what Trapper says when he says it. That's a policy I hold for pretty much anyone who always seems to have fresh blood on their hands. Hey, don't worry about it. It's all just a game. Existence, that is. Oh, is she threatening my life? <laughs> Besides, you seem a lot more interesting than a silly game. Oh my goodness, I think they want to murder me. What's your deal? What brings you here? You mean, they're here to do more than distract from my total domination? Deep sigh. <sighs> Oh, oh, sorry. <coughs> Woo. That was Wraith. The sigh means he was done with the game too. Either that or he saw a butterfly or something. Look, 
I don't care why this slack-jawed moron is here. Jeez, he's so mean. I just want to know, can I kill them or not? Oh my gosh. You know, you can't. The Huntress. At least not yet. Oh my gosh, she got out her axe. Her hatchets. Oh yeah, not yet. Hey, Lola. You might want to, you know, say something. Actually, never mind. There's, There'll be plenty of time for that soon enough. Right now, this group has some questions for you. So I got to say something to their questions, right? But be warned, answer quickly and answer well. Oh, my God. This is a time quiz. <laughs> what? <coughs> what? <laughs> and it will be a very, it will be very important later. Very important. Or not important in any way whatsoever. Probably that one. I can't remember. How attractive would you say you are? Uh, average? I'm pretty average, I think. Just another face in the crowd, another normal, meaningless life in an endless cycle. I think you're quite cute myself, like a chipmunk or a grizzly bear. A grizzly bear? Oh. <coughs> <coughs> if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Invisibility, flight, strength. Super strength. Super strength would be cool. Strength isn't all about muscles. True strength is up here. You expect Trapper to point to his head, but instead he taps it one of his bulging shoulders. <coughs> <coughs> I don't know why. <coughs> I'm, <coughs> I'm coughing so much, man. <sighs> Trapper. It's specifically in these muscles. Nobody gives a crap about your calves. <laughs> what was your best subject in school? It was math, actually. Probably math. It's the only thing that makes sense when you think about it. What's your favorite animal? Um, you want me to say bunny? Dog, cat, mustelid. What's a mustelid? Mustelid, 100%. Be honest, you have no idea what a mustelid is, and you're just hoping it's some secret answer that results in a hilarious Easter egg, right? I have no clue. I just wanted to click it because I don't know what it is. <laughs> because there is no Easter egg. It's just another word for ferrets and sound, stuff like that. Ferrets are kind of cool. What's your favorite color? Orange? Blue? Uh, Three-day-old corpse? Nobody would expect me to pick this, so I'm going to say three-day-old corpse. That's a pretty edgy answer, right? I'm pretty dangerous. I talk about corpses. No biggie. Those are no good to me unless they've been frozen. You'd be surprised of how by how quickly good meat can spoil. Oh, yeah, she... She hunts what she eats. <clears throat> or maybe you wouldn't be surprised. I'm still getting to know you. <clears throat> What's your dream job? Astronaut. Nightclub promoter? Not working at all. If we get to do what we really want, why work at all? It takes a lot of courage to break free from society's expectations to climb the ladder. Oh, only she could spin laziness into some kind of grand crusade. These damn millennials. Oh, I'm a she. Best flavor of ice cream? Vanilla, chocolate, chocolate. Chocolate! I can't believe it said it. Horse flesh. My favorite flavor is pain. <laughs> Same here. Uh, <laughs> mine is vanilla. Swirled with pain. I think mink chip is a great flavor ever conceived myself. But enough about ice cream. Am I right? <clears throat> Hold on a second. This reminds me... I am right, always. Let, it's a lesson you should learn before we go too much further. Do what I say if you want to survive. Pick mint chip. <clears throat> We're teaching lessons now, narrator? You rascal. Kill or be killed is the rule of, on this island. Even for faceless voices. Tell me, what's the best flavor of ice cream? Still chocolate. The best, fa the best flavor is chocolate. You got a reading comprehension problem? I just told you mint chip was where it's at. it's at. You almost brought yourself a game over there, buddy. That's right. I can end your life whenever I want to. I'm in control, so don't you forget it. If I say you like mint chip, you like mint chip. Now try it again. Tell me, what's the best flavor of ice cream? Horse flesh. The best flavor is horse flesh. You got a reading comprehension? I just told you mint chip was where it's at okay is is this gonna just loop until 
I, I really like chocolate. <clears throat> in case it wasn't clear who is in charge, it's me. You have to understand, it feels very good to end someone else's game. You should try it sometime. Oh! <laughs> I lost. <laughs> try again, I guess. And I guess I'll pick the mint one, right? Because this crazy narrator, mint chip. Best flavor is mint chip. So obedient. I think you're gonna do just fine. Oh, now that they know so much about you, I'm sure the group wants you to start getting to know them. <clears throat> I'm Trapper. I pretty much run things around here. Really? Really, Trapper? I'm the smartest, richest, strongest person on the whole island. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I don't like losers. If you want to know what a loser is, say hello to Wraith. Oh, that's messed up. Hi, I'm Wraith. I'm nothing like everyone else. I like nice people and loaf big dumb idiots. Hey, what's up? I'm Spirit. I don't like most things. I noticed you got angry a lot. <sighs> I don't really hate most things either. It's not worth my time. But the things I do hate, I really hate, you know? Yeah, it makes sense. Based on my personal observations, life is nothing but suffering, and society is a carefully calculated lie to keep everyone subservient to those in power. It's better to choose to just not take part. I can see that with the way she died in her description of the blind daylight. Ah, I missed it! Oh no, wait. I'm remembering Spirit's story now, and that's almost exactly what happened. Yep, okay. Yeah, I just mentioned that. Hey. I'm Huntress. Don't let these boomers get you down. Are you the oldest one here? There's lots of fun to be had on this island, along with lots of love. Really? Yeah, there is. If you know what I mean. Grow up. Grow a body. Oh, that's messed up. I've explained this a thousand times. I'm dead. But I'm not a literal ghost. I just create a trail of fog. I'm not made of of it. Whatever, fog body. That's not nice. He's not nice. You love it. Only sometimes. Ew, really? That's disgusting. That's why she likes it. Don't speak for me. I also hate it. Stop speaking entirely, actually. For the first time ever, I agree with Ray. Let's move on. Otherwise, they'll do this all day. Besides, if I know this crew, and I do, they'll want to show off soon enough. If, we, if we're if we done playing, let's do something else instead. Wow, for once, I actually agree with the meathead. I say, we go to my yacht. It's the massive boat docked nearby. <clears throat> I'll give everyone a taste of true luxury and power. Wraith rolls his eyes. Don't mind him. He just hates fun and happiness. No, I hate the endless, desperate, soul-crushing pursuit of wealth, the way it flaunts it needlessly, and the cruelty it engenders. What about hanging out by the pool? I find the water calming, simple, beautiful. I think I'm gonna have to choose where we're going, huh? Hey, what about our volleyball game? We can exercise and have some fun as a group. Are you all serious? There's a perfectly good lounge to chill out at right here. I kind of want to chill, right? At the lounge with... I'm tired, and besides, I hate being in the sun. Where do you want to go? I, I would like to try out the lounge. Who cares about the yacht? How about the... Oh, crud! <laughs> oh! It was in front of their choices! No! Oh! <laughs> Oh gosh, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> Their choices was right in front of them. That is so, uh, I had to pick the one in front of the spirit. Jeez, no. Okay, perfect. You obviously have the modicum of taste and good judgment. At least I hope you do. I'm gonna get murdered. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. <clears throat> Worst case? We'll find out how strong your bones are, how heavy you are to pick up and throw, and how fast your lifeless body sinks. Should be a pretty chill day regardless. <clears throat> Claudette, hold on! For just one moment! This is Dwight and Claudette, our activities coordinators. 
They're also the cooks, waiters, bartenders, janitors, and every other job. They're the only help remaining on the island. This place we call Murderer's Island. Cue dramatic musical flourish. None of the survivors survived. Um, survived the interview process, I mean. Hence why we shall hear to four, he to four, I can't say that, refer to them as survivors with a capital S. These two have worked here a long time, so very long, I don't actually know how long it's been. Sorry, anyway, I should probably let Dwight and Cla Claudette do their mandated jobs. They sure look happy, but they're vibrating and a nervous with a nervous energy that is starting to give me the creeps. We will now escort the group to the venue of your choosing. <clears throat> However, in the future we recommend waiting for us to present you with your options whenever possible and don't just run off to various activities unsupervised. We don't have much autonomy around here. The least you can do is allow us to do our job. The most you could do is help us get off this I Dwight <clears throat> Yes, pardon me, please follow us. <laughs> they really want to get off. Hey narrator <clears throat> Yes, something I can help you with Those two Claudia and Dwight did they just say to start to mention something about wanting to escape is escape an option Should I be trying to escape? Escape them? Oh, no, 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 no. I think you're mistaken. It seemed like Dwight was asking for help to get off this island, though. Oh, right, that. Yes, that's true. He was. But he just meant that he wants to get to the other vacation island getaway. A couple miles south of here. It has much fancier accommodations than this island. It's one of those big corporate outfits. Quite exclusive. Where all the famous celebrities hang out. Very luxurious. Doesn't quite have the charm that this island has, though. Trust me, you wouldn't want to go there. With all that money comes a lot of restrictions. This is where you belong. Now, now, off you go. It's time for an activity. On this island, your decisions matter, mostly. When I agree with them, not like that other island. So, what'll it be? Okay, so, oh, I get, I get to pick it again. Oh, wait. This looks like the volleyball game. That's the yacht. That's the volleyball game. That's the thing the rape said, right? So this is, that's the, okay. Yes, all right. I, I was able to redeem myself there. Finally, freedom from the preposterous premise that the four of us would be engaged in some sort of thrilling two-on-two -two volleyball match. Spirit looks at you from beneath her gigantic sun hat. She takes a conspiratorial tone. I don't know whose idea of volleyball was in the first place, but I hate them. I tried to fend a, spra a sprained ankle, but everyone already knows that I technically float above the ground, so nobody believed I was even putting any pressure on my joints in the first place. Then I tried to annoy everyone by not giving a crap, and when that didn't work, I tried whining. And when that didn't work, <clears throat> I threatened to kill every single person on this island. But, <laughs> she, I don't know, for some reason, she kind of looks cute this way. <laughs> In a psychotic manner. <clears throat> it turns out, I'm not the first to toss those kinds of threats around this island. So thanks, I guess, for getting it called off. Are we threatening to end each other again? Aha, uh -huh, uh -huh. Now it's Dwight who takes on a conspiratorial tone, his eyes shifting as he slips into a loud whisper. Please, just make it quick. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Claudette, uh... Is what you'll be saying when we get behind the bar to make you the drink of your dreams? Ah! <laughs> Dwight, Dwight is so nervous. <laughs> Cloud it. <laughs> Hilarious, right? Right, Dwight? Yeah, right, right. So, what would you be having? Uh, Vasca, Sangria, Scotch Rocks, Virgin Daiquiri? I don't know, sang Sangria? 
Something fruity but refreshing. Hold the coconut rum, a sangria, maybe. I don't really drink in real life, so I don't know what these drinks are. My pleasure. That sounds nice. We used to make drinks like that back home. I'm like really getting on Rafe's positive side here. Well, not we exactly. I watched someone drink a drink like that once. Now you see your chance to be the one with the drink. What do you say? I like my mouse double clicked and I'm so mad right now. This is some sort of juice for a child. Are there children hiding about? Jeez, Huntress. No, it's for adults. The kind who like, you know, tropical fun. Oh, I see. Huntress really seemed to perk up at the idea of kids being around and is bummed to hear there are any. But I'm quite glad it's just grown-ups on this island. Personally, little ones should definitely not be exposed to this. Oh, she's crying. Oh, Jeez, she really wanted kids to be here. Not my cup of tea, but okay, sure. We can still use it for a toast, yeah. To new adventures. To new friends. To, uh, click. Did you just say clink? Yeah, yeah, what, what do you mean by that, Rafe? No. Since we've fulfilled your request, it's time for you to return the favor. I should have known there was a catch. Icebreaker time. I swear, had I known they'd pull this kind of... Fox enthusiastic community building crap. I've been suggested we attempt to walk to the lowest point of the ocean before I ever set foot near this bar. You don't think it could be kind of fun, a little fun? Never mind, I hate it. This sucks, but it could be fine. Or whatever you say. Has anyone seen my hat? I've literally never seen him in a hat. If we must make small talk, I'm a, at least picking a topic before we end up being forced to do some lame improv game that nerds learn at their non-sports after-school activities that I definitely never did because I'm no nerd. Methinks a certain someone doth protest too much. Sitting here on this beautiful sunny afternoon, warm sand beneath the cool fog beneath my shivered feet. Severed feet. Ugh. Oh, God. The topic I choose is books, novels, comics, fiction, or non. Reading is only the only real escape from the inescapable horror of life that escape into your own mind. A groan rolls through the crowd. Not a lot of readers here, I'd imagine. Based on that response, they were much more enthusiastic about drinking. Consider your situation we're in. It seems an appropriate time to ask you. Lola, what's your desert island book? The one book you'd bring with you if you were, well, on an island like this. Oh, and it has to be a classic horror. For reasons that should be obvious. She means because this is an island of horror villains. And also those books are all in the public domain. <laughs> Okay, nothing, uh, maybe Frankenstein, I guess, I don't know. Nothing modern. Humanity has really gotten soft these part, past 100 years, so what's your favorite? Let's see if Frankenstein's monster is going to be on this list. Hey, it is! Dracula, Frankenstein, books, no thanks, Dr. Drick. That's a pretty good book, but Frankenstein, I said it. I didn't actually read it, but I've seen like three movie versions of Frankenstein. They've all been pretty good. You know, you can lie to make yourself look smarter. They're killers, not mind readers. Oh, that's a good one. Seeking knowledge, but finding only death. Yeah, been there. Jeez, every response I have, Rafe is in love with this. I think my, my points is going up with Rafe. <clears throat> I can't say that my experience, experiments have been as successful, but well, fingers crossed. And fire. Don't even get me started. Experiments. Crap. Not again. I swear. Every excuse you give him, it's this talk about. <coughs> shut up. <coughs> Did you just tell me to shut up? <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Take it from me. This one likes to think he's the scientist, but he's actually the monster. Can't I be a little bit of both? 
like I said, I haven't actually read it, but that sounds smart enough that I'd be willing to believe it's the true meaning of the story. Enough about these old stories that belong to someone else. <laughs> I think it's time to make up some new stories of our own. Oh, Huntress. Oh, you, you're getting ahead of yourself. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, geez. Before you know what's going on, Huntress is waving an empty vodka bottle in the air and devilishly winking in her half mast covered eye. And she's holding up her axe for some reason. <clears throat> Might I suggest something a little naughty? Ooh, naughty. Whoa, whoa. Let's all get in a circle and spin this bad boy. Spin what? The bottle? <clears throat> Whoa! I was not expecting Trickster to be in this game. Great idea! Trickster? Isn't it a bit late to introduce a new character? I thought I was the one who gets to make the rules, so I'm not sure who I'm asking. But I wasn't ready for this. Well, hello. And who is this new fan in the waiting? I was not expecting Trickster to be here. That's insane. Beat it, hack. I don't know. What's the harm in inviting one more person to join the circle for our game? Oh, I can't stay. I was just saying, it's a great idea. While also teasing the secret trickster ending. Okay. So, at some point I'm gonna have to try to find a secret trickster ending? I've got much, much better things to do than hang out here. I'm famous. Yeah, he's pissed off at me for some reason. Toodaloo. The rules are simple. First you spin, then you swap, spin, swap, spin. That is. But let's be clear, this ain't a peep show. We're here to have a good time, but in a classy way. All makeouts will happen out of view of the public eye, real romantic like. Yes, romance is the go. So we'll all be waiting here in complete silence, trying to listen in and use our imaginations while you make out with on the other side of the bar, not but not watching. Like adults, romantic, well-adjusted adults. Lola, you're up. You grip the bottle in your hand, and part of your fate in the hands. In part, and put your fate in the hands of the empty bottle gods. Many games consist of two parts. On top, a pointer that rotates in a clockwise direction, and on the bottom, a target you're going to be pointing at. So it's a skill check. This here upcoming mini game is a special mini game, perfect for the less coordinated because there is no winning or losing. Well, technically, wherever the pointer stops, that's your result. I suppose if it doesn't stop where you want it to, that's a bit like losing, but no one has to know if you don't tell them. Okay, ready to play, or would you like me to repeat that? Now I'm ready. I'm ready. Come on. Away we go. Spin the bottle and see who you're gonna smooch. Ah, uh, okay. Do I, oh, stops right here. Oh! Ooh, Huntress suggested the game. You got Huntress, you two are meant to be. Psych, you have to actually spin multiple times to get your real result. First, to get to three times is your true match. That's how we play hardcore spin the bottle on this here island. Okay, now get your spin on. Oh wait, stops down here. Huntress again. You got Huntress. Oh, right, yeah, Trapper. Uh. Spirit, okay. Wraith. Huntress, I got it. You got Huntress. Huntress is your true match. Woo! <laughs> Just this morning, you were waking up on a strange beach surrounded by strangers with murderous intent. Now, you're looking across a beach towel at Huntress, lust in her eyes, sweat glistening on her skin. Your heart races. You can feel your pulse pounding in your ears. Huntress takes you by the hand and you sit face to face at a private section of the bar. She begins to reach for you, putting her hands on your shoulders. You're sweating, but not in the sexy way she she is. <laughs> You're sweating in the gross way you sweat at the interview for a job. You're not even remotely qualified for. I'm not qualified for this, Huntress. 
You don't know what to do if you try lock lips in this state. You might gross her out so completely that she'll never be able to look at you romantically again. Huntress, I, you, we. I'm sorry, but I can't kiss you right now. Oh, okay. What? You're relieved, but also might maybe a little hurt. It's not you. Well, it is you, but in a good way. I think you're great, maybe too great. I don't trust easily, and I'm afraid of what it might mean to connect with you so early. It's not that I don't want to. I just don't think it's the right thing right now. Oh, wow, that was really mature of her. I just noticed that her hair's short. I didn't notice that before because, like, this, this little cloak thing behind her mask. But, yeah, she got short hair. I understand. Amazing. But also, understand this. If you tell anyone I got so soft, I'll break you in half, okay? I'll tell them you almost chewed my whole face off. Clean off. Oh, I like that. I hate to break up such a passionate moment that we only assume was passionate because we never spy on you constantly while you stay on the island. But dinner is being served right away and we must assist that you join us. We wouldn't want anyone dying of starvation. Well, when there are so many more interesting things to die from. All right, all right. Seems like the next activity is mealtime. Quaint. You were expecting what? Capture the flag? Do you know how complicated it is to run a game like that? More, much more riso than sitting and talking. Much more so than sitting and talking. You arrived at the cookout area to find an assortment of picnic tables scattered around. What were you expecting? Some kind of grand hall with a huge banquet table? No, not at all, because we're on a beach. This ain't some prestigious fantasy epic like you'd find on cable. Doyne and Cla Claudette usher you to your seat, but there's very limited seating directly around you. And, oh great, terrific. It seems that everyone wants to sit next to you. Oh my goodness, this is kind of like in, uh, what's that game? Monster Prom, right? Where you gotta pick where you gotta sit and whom? Oh jeez. Even better is that they don't want to sit next to certain other people either. To start, no one wants to sit next to Trapper. Wait, this is a game? No one wants to sit next to Trapper. While Meanwhile, he refuses to sit next to Wraith or Trickster. Oh god, I, should I be writing this down? Um, hold on. Hold on. Mistakes are going to be made. Okay. So Trapper. No one wants to sit next to him. Alright. Um, Trapper. Doesn't want tr Wraith or Trickster. So no Wraith. No Trickster. Watch me be making this super complicated. <sighs> okay. Oh, yeah, Trickster is here. Surprise? Yeah, well, they don't call him expected, sir. I'm sorry. Even I get nervous around crowds of killers, and my whole stick gets a little flustered. Hey, there. You're looking good, Lola. Real good. His bat looks not like metal, or it's very dented up by overuse. Or it's just a balloon. I'm going to go with it's just a balloon because he's on a beach. And we literally can't let Huntress and Tra Trapper sit together. Okay, so Huntress and Trapper are not sitting together, which we already know. Okay. Does that mean I got to sit next to Trapper? No, seriously, their arms are too big. They can't fit at the table if they sit side by side. That That is true. Look at this. We can't even fit everyone on screen at the same time. You probably think it was an error. But it's not. It was completely intentional. Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah. Makes sense. Let that be a lesson to you. Every error you think you see is a choice. Got that? Okay. Yeah. 
every bug I see in this game is a choice. Okay, Dwight and Claudette are directing traffic. You sit on one side. The rest of them will sit opposite you. Huntress and Trapper can sit at the ends with their enormous sexy arms. Now that everyone is seated, I did not have to write any of this down. Jeez. <laughs> now that everyone is seated, <laughs> we can begin dinner. This is terrible. Oh. Tonight's meal was prepared slowly and carefully with both love and hate for 12 hours over a spit. Over a spit? What? We hope you all enjoy. We really, really hope you do. Hey, you didn't actually tell us what you're serving. What are we eating? It's meat. What type of meat? Why are they glistening like that? Seasoned with specific number of special herbs and spices that we simply can't divulge. Okay. My favorite. Meat is good. Meat is murder. So, is Wraith a vegan? Which you'd know, considering what you've been up to. Who are you to get judgy now? Okay. Wow. I'm just I'm just sharing facts. And you need to murder something to eat its meat. So that's like technically true. Technically true is the best kind of true. Okay, enough yapping. Let's eat. Hey, Lola. You thinking what I'm thinking? Not at all. It's gonna be a person on that spit, right? Or several parts of overlapping people, perhaps. I haven't seen many pigs wearing palm tree button down prints, you know? Okay. When you look closely at the spit, you spot what definitely appears to be scraps of fabric sandwiched between some layers of meat. I think I might be sick. Is there anything else to eat? This took 12 hours. And we do literally everything on this island. They're angry? Actually, there's one thing you don't, you're not doing today. You're not carving up this delectable meal. Whoa. Wow. He's right for a change. Because I am with my broad axe. It's the perfect tool for easily chopping away in twine. What? First, who says twine? Sometimes I swear it's like we're all from completely different historical eras. Second, I'll handle this with my cleaver. Fast, powerful, and clean. At least it's clean when the meat is cooked. No blood. Are they talking about killing me? Uh, you two and your ridiculous bicep swinging contest. Enough. Grow up. Obviously, my gorgeous katana is the only option. Obvs. The hell it is. Oh, I'll show you both my katana and send you to actual hell if you'd like. Please stop, please. I hate when we fight or talk or even when we look at each other in the eye. I can do it. I have the skull of Azeroth. Raz. Great. Instead of slicing it up, you can club it to, this, to a second death. I think they're talking about murdering me. Hey, Lola. I know this isn't what you want to eat, but hurry up and volunteer to carve up Felix. I mean, dinner. Are they talking about carving me up or carving up Felix? Uh, that's Felix? It's Felix on the... Oh my gosh. <laughs> Otherwise, this will go on for hours. No, Hyperbole. They once argued over who had the most effective weapons for 72 hours straight. And it doesn't matter which one does it. When they're done, they will take even longer cleaning their weapon, all while explaining the value of maintaining your tools. Despite being a bunch of cold-blooded killers, for some reason, they're always terrified of Tetanus. What's Tetanus? Who's Tetanus? Tetanus. 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 Okay. Terrified of Tetanus. <laughs> Tetanus. <laughs> i never actually seen it spelled out. Hey, why don't you just let me carve up dinner? Splendid idea. We'd hate for it to get cold. He hated it when it got cold. He's Here's a machete. Freshly sharpened. Mini games. Consists of two parts. Okay. 
and on the bottom, a target you're going to be pointing at. This is going to get harder, huh? Sometimes the target is immediately visible. Sometimes it's hidden until the pointer arrives. Oh, that sucks. Press spacebar to stop the pointer while target. Okay. All right. This is a skill check. Ah, oh, I hope these are not hard. I hope they make the sound. To achieve a perfect success, land on the start of the target, not the end. Okay, ready? Uh, I guess I'm ready. I'm kind of scared. Ready? Away we go. Slice. Oh, I did it. Oh, that was perfect. Oh, that was not perfect. Oh, no. This is getting... Oh, my God. That was pretty good. Oh, my God. The spirit's going to murder me. I like to see what you could do with a less clumsy weapon. Yeah, I said it. Machetes are dumb. Dinner is finally served. For real. The sounds, especially coming from the mass killers while they eat, which involves lifting their masks and shoving food up behind them, are nasty. Spirit, meanwhile, doesn't even eat. She's the only one who seems to really be embracing being dead. They're all dead, right? This is obviously hell. I mean, come on. We're still trying to be mysterious here. You think mis mystery comes easy? Claudia and Dwight aren't the only ones who've been working their butts off to make this night perfect. Well, at least they're lifting their masks. This is only 99% as disgusting as it could be if they tried to mask stuff through. To mash stuff through there. Yeah, that's true. If they try to mash the food, the... Oh, to mash Felix through their masks. Oh, I think the only one who can actually do it is probably uh, the Huntress, right? Her mask doesn't come all the way down. And Wraith doesn't have a mask. And Spirit doesn't have a mask. Trickster doesn't have a mask. Trapper would be really difficult. Spirit, why aren't you hungry? The two best things about being dead is not having to eat. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Like, if we're ever kissing, you won't have meat breath on you. Flesh. <laughs> That's only one thing. Think about it, Lola. Number two is no number two. One less thing to think about in the afterlife. That is a great way to think about it. That is great. You don't have to poop. <laughs> Even if I wanted to eat, I have no idea what would actually follow. That's true. You might have noticed, but I am mostly just a bunch of dismembered body parts floating in the spectral form. Do you see how deep this cut in my abdomen is? I don't think my digestive tract connects anymore. Between the food and the behavior of the group, this might be the worst meal in history. True. I didn't know I could press space. I'm loving that I could press space instead of clicking. But even worse is they're staring at you. You're not eating. They don't like that. <laughs> I think they want an explanation why. What do you want to tell them? I don't like flesh. This is gross. I'm sorry. Look at that seagull. Yeah. Wow, you ever see a seagull that big? I haven't. That's incredible. Anyway, what were we talking about? Lame misdirect. Yeah, she's right, Lola. Pretty lame. Own who you are. Never come promise. Didn't you wash up on this island with no memory of who you are and how you got here? Yes, you did, poor thing. You have no idea the last time you ate a real meal, and you've been standing in the sun. But the seagull, uh-oh, he just made a lot of good points. I swear, you're beginning to feel lightheaded. It waved at me. Maybe you need to eat to survive here. Either that or someone poisoned you. No, wait, you haven't eaten, so you can't be poisoned. Hmm, whatever the answer, you've clearly about pat to pass out. Oh, hey, it's me again. Your friend, mentor, and guide. Narrator to the narrator, the ocean. Not sure how I feel about the cur that characterization, but I'll allow it. I brought you here, and I might be the only one who can help you now. There's only one thing you must do to survive. You have to figure out why you're really here. No one can tell you, uh, not unless you follow the right path. 
or at least a right path. There's too many of those to count. Hopefully you pick at least one of them. Hopefully so. Because there are even more wrong paths. Many of them lead to your demise. Others lead to something even worse. Starting scenes over and having to fast forward back to where you were. Am I right? For this place holds many secrets, even from itself. But the one that truly matters can only be learned if you answer the most important question. Why are you here? Why are you here? Answer that and you'll find the truth. The ultimate truth. Vague, mysterious. I gotta give it to up to this ocean character. That's some quality early game storytelling. Hold on, I'm back. One more piece of advice. You've made many choices by now. Some of them I liked, some of them I did not. It's in your best interest to make more choices like that I like. Jeez, gosh, these, these two. You wake up to find a trapper holding a, your body limp, gingerly pouring cool water into your mouth. You had me worried, dear, passing out like that. This is awkward. <laughs> I thought maybe you died. That would have been terrible. No, uh, nobody dies on this island without me killing them. You hear that? Nobody. Thanks, I guess. Don't mention it. I mean that. Don't mention it. Someone might think I care for you. That can't happen. I've got a reputation to uphold. I'm starting to understand, I think. When you went down, it looked like you hit your head on the edge of the table. If it were me, the table would have been the one to crack open. I'm sure it really hurt you, though. So I figured a little ocean air might help wake you up. And I brought you down by the water. That's really thoughtful of you. What? A magnificently muscular, wealthy, aristocratically gifted Adonis can't also be thoughtful? I... Don't answer, because it's obvious. Adonis was a... <laughs> okay! Killed by a boar. Get out of here with that garbage. <laughs> I do find myself in an unusual position, though. Despite the overwhelming probability that I'll eventually find myself standing over your lifeless corpse, I don't want you to dead just yet. So I'm here to talk to you like a regular human person. And right now, I'm worried that I might be coming off a bit too forceful. I know, my mere presence can be intimidating. But I don't want you to get the wrong impression about me or how I feel about you. So I'll just put it out there. I might possibly like you. I can't say that about everyone, or really anyone else on this island. There's something different about you. You aren't like the others henceforth. I think it's time I shared something with you that I haven't shared with anyone in a long time. It's a big part of who I am, and I think you're ready for it. You watch as Trapper reaches into his singlet and pulls out some sort of rolled up scroll of paper. He grips it firmly in his hands. It's one of my sketches. He draws? I don't know if you know this, but I love to draw. The arts have always been a passion of mine. I want to see it. Would you like to see it? Of course. Yeah. Yes, I'd love to. I'm so excited you are ready to share this with me. Trapper does not unroll the paper to sh and show it to you. He simply stares at you and watches your smile soften and fade. And the longer he stares at you, the closer he seems to get. What an interesting response. Thanks, I hope. Trapper looks at you, a piercing look even though his, through his mask. He smirks, but it's not clear why. Then he turns and leaves. Just as things are really heating up, you hear a fur flurry of footsteps behind you and you quickly spin around, ready to fend off whatever new danger has popped up on this I strange island. Only to find that it's Dwight and Claudette sprinting across the beach, clipboards in hand, which they're waving in the air above their heads. It's very important that we stick to the itinerary and attend each event as scheduled. Playing sick for cute flirt points was not a part of this evening's activities. That's strictly slotted, slotted in for after campfire story time. At this rate, we'll be late. Playing sick? No, I was. No time for excuses. Well, there is, but that's scheduled for after what comes after the flirting. 
Go, 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 go! Once everyone has gathered at the fire pit, Dwight and Claudette quickly make an announcement. We're not going to blame anyone in particular, but someone, and we're not going to say who, so don't worry, you has, hasn't has been sticking to the schedule. That means that we're behind on time for evening activities, and well, we'll only be, we'll only have time for one person to share their special spooky nighttime story. Just one story, but story time is my favorite activity. This is a narrative heavy experience. You're telling us that only one person gets to share. How will we decide then? Oh great, we have to decide as a group. That never goes well. Whoever did this, step up now. I swear I won't be angry. I merely chop your head clean off. No fuss, no muss. Voice trembling, you realize this is probably it for you, but you embrace your fate. So sorry everyone, I think they're talking about me to be honest. I still don't understand how this whole schedule thing works. I guess I lost track of time while I was passed out. Yeah, <laughs> been there before. Even though it's taking some pressure off me. What's this, trial run? I got an achievement called trial run. Which is an absolute dream come true. Is it really fair to pick on the newbie? Seriously, has anything here ever happened on schedule even once? Damn it, Donald. Who's Donald? If you try to flex that authoritary gimmick one more time so help me oh is donald uh Rape's real name i don't remember i'll snap your head off so quick and then i'll drown you in his blood cynthia fuss and muss are back on you two know i love to hack slash and slice is cynthia the spirit's name we all know you love to kill it's almost all you talk about Nobody named any names. Who even knows any names? Not us. I renounce my name. Who's Donald? Who's Dwight? Who even knows anymore? Call me nobody. Nobody. Okay, so is that Dwight talking? But we still gotta get started on story time. So, yeah. Dwight is now nobody. Lola, who do you think should go? Ah, uh, damn it. That's a name. Please pick somebody quickly so that this tropical vacation doesn't turn into a bloodbath. Ooh, whose story do I want to hear? I feel like the spirit might have a great story, but uh, he might have something so technical. His is just going to be chopping stuff up. She was talking about books, so she might have a great story. I'm going to go with I choose you, spirit. Whoa, whoa. This entire experience is being carefully crafted to avoid an IP infringement law. Let's be careful with the catchphrases, will you? <laughs> oh, because it's a Pokemon reference? Really? You want to hear from me? Spirit huffs and dramatically rolls her eyes as she gets to her feet in front of the campfire. It sounds like she doesn't want to go. I, I kind of messed up there, huh? Don't let her talk you out of it. She's great with great ghost stories. I don't know where she gets it, but she comes up with the scariest stuff. Seriously disturbing, even to me. And I literally pulled the guy's skull and spine out once with my bare hands. Talk about bullcrap stories. If everyone else is going to chit chat, I guess I can sit, just sit down and Huntress' eyes go red behind her mask and both Trapper and Rafe take a, their seat. They know when it's worth fighting and when it's not. Yeah, Huntress is about to murder these guys. <laughs> um, well, I hate to break it to you, but tonight's story isn't scary, it's a romance. Too late now though. I was selected and so I'm going to tell my story. I call it the prisoner's kiss. Am I the prisoner? You notice that Huntress and Rafe are both sharing a giant tub of popcorn. Nobody offered you popcorn. It was a dark summer night. Warm rain seeped from the sky like blood from an old wound. Detective Hota, a celebrated investigator and renowned hostage negotiator, was called to the scene of a strange occurrence unlike anything she had ever seen before. 
When she arrived, the scene was chaotic. Crowds had begun to gather. A dozen other officers were doing everything they could to keep curious onlookers away. But how could some how could anyone resist wanting to know more? For there, in the middle of a busy market, had appeared a giant box, strange, alien in its appearance, and massive in size. No one knew how it got there. Was it delivered, built on site, in such a busy area? How could something like this just appear? A mystery. It was as if conjured by magic. But this was no illusion. The huge box was very real as someone was trapped inside. Spirit pauses her story to look from face to face of each audience member. She has no expression, but you feel her vibrating with energy. She's in her element. Help me, cried someone inside the box. It was a man, terrified, trapped in prison, his voice trembling. By now, it was if every detective in the city was there, looking this strange structure up and down, inspecting it on every side, it didn't make sense. There were no doors, no windows, no fasteners or seams. It was completely solid and much too heavy to move by hand. Solid, that is, except for a single small slit, just enough to see the bloodshot eyes of the prisoner trapped inside. I don't know what happened. I woke up and here I was. I'm so scared, please help me, cried the man, as if pleading for his life. No stranger to tense situations, Detective Hotop comforted the man. She used her training to calm him and buy time for the other investigators. However, time did not bring clarity, only anxiety as the night dragged on with no progress opening the box. And as the night grew longer, the seeping rain puddling on the ground, the man inside grew more desperate, more sad and lonely, more pathetic and in need of help. But Detective Hota was no help at all. Powerless to save him, guilt began to weigh on her like never, like it never had before. Don't let me die in here, the man begged. Don't let me die alone. Stay calm, instructed Detective Hota. You're not alone, I'm here. Hell, half the town is here. We're all in this together. We won't let you. this be the end of your story. Looking through the narrowest of passageways, Detective Hota watched her own reflection in the tear-filled eyes of this stranger, sad prisoner. Together, they both wept in silence at the hopelessness of the moment. Oh, wow, the spirit's so into it, she's crying. Wow, I didn't even notice that. I'm so engulfed in the story, I didn't even see her expression. Promise, asked the man. Promise that I'm not alone. Yes, she promised. I do. A simple pledge. She felt an instant connection like she had never felt before. Not to her family, not to her friends, not to any of the other hostages she had worked so hard to free before. And so... When the man's eyes closed and backed away, it didn't scare Detective Hota, for she knew he would return, and he did, pressing his lips up to the narrow slit in this horrible puzzle box, repeating his question again, steam flowing, steam flowing from his mouth as he asked, steam? Why steam flowing from his mouth? Promise, promise that I'm not alone. Yes, she said, I do, and pressing her palms against the cold outside of the box without truly knowing why. Is she going to get stuck in? Detective Hota leaned forward and placed her own lips up to the opening and let her breath creep into the strange structure, allowing her warm lips to fall on this man's. She kissed the, the prisoner? It was a gentle kiss, a moment of compassion. She could feel in this brief contact the beating of her heart pulsing blood through every inch of her body match beat for beat in this soft touch thank you said the man no trace of fear remaining in his voice and he backed away into the darkness disappearing in a single moment of eerie calmness get back yelled the officer suddenly thrusting himself between detective hotel and the box breaking a silence 
that would soon be filled with filled by a cacophony of whirling gears and clicking latches a symph symphony of mechanical activity happening all at once something had triggered as if an unseen lever pulled and the side of the giant box began to slide open detective hota gripped her flashlight tightly and pushed forward into the fog foggy interior of the giant box her feet splashed in the puddled rainwater her heart racing as she swept her light from side to side and then and that's when her eyes landed on the man or at least landed on what should have been a man should have been him there in the corner of the box was a pile of pieces like parts of a doll almost pulled apart or perhaps that's just how detective hota had to think of him in that moment to survive a collection of segments, limbs, pieces, disconnected from one another, cleanly severed and placed in a neat little pile. And atop that pile head, cold pile, pale, eyes open, lips and icy blue. Spirit stares at the fire, her own expression lifeless, her lips blue. Tears fall from her chin and soak into the sand at her feet. You're blown away by the story, and it's safe to say you're not alone. Everyone else is looking into the fire or up at the sky, anywhere but at the spirit. It was you who chose her. You who initiated this harrowing tale, so sad, so creepy, so sensual. She really went into great detail when it came to describing that kiss. Too much detail, and now no one is sure to act. Dwight and Claudette are staring daggers at you. You have to do something. This game was supposed to be a light-hearted romp. Please, I said, do something. Say nothing, hugger. Cool story. Stand up and try to start one of the, those slow claps. <laughs> That's hilarious. Stand up and try to start one of those slow claps or stand up and hug her. Oh, I want to hug her, but I'm going to do the slow clap one because that's hilarious. I don't think she will appreciate me touching her. You stand up and clap once. Then after a beat again, slowly building a dramatic group clap. Rafe stands next to you and claps. No one else does. Spirit floats off as the clapping slows to a halt, which happens almost immediately because it was slow to begin with. Usually they're much more disturbing. More disturbing than that? No. You don't regret picking spirit to tell the story for tonight, but you have to admit to yourself that even on the strangest day of her, your life so far, that you can remember at least, you still weren't prepared for that. On that note, everyone decides it's time to take a break and split up for a little bit so that they can all have a moment alone before bed. Everyone leaves and you're alone by the fire. The only thing you hear is the ocean slowly lapping against the shore. This is nice. A true moment of peace and tranquility that lasts for all of seven seconds before Trickster, because Trickster shows up and he's blaring his latest song. Hey baby, you look lonely. Mind if I join you? He doesn't wait for an answer. I know you've been hearing from these guppies all day, but I want you to hear something from a big fish like me. Something special those in charge of this island don't want you to hear. I am the ultimate catch on this island, the only lobster in an ocean of sardines. No one can give you what I can. You just have to find me. Come find me, baby. Trickster leaves. You're a bit confused about what to make of his cryptic clues, but you aren't going to get any time to yourself to think about them just yet. Spirit approaches you. You know, I was watching you while I told my story. I could tell it was having an effect on you. This fog that follows me around, I could feel you breathing heavily, taking me in. You and I are both absolutely flabbergasted at this that piece of information. Legit, you learn something new every day. Even when you're a god, I mean a narrator. You're doing it again right now. You need to calm down. You should come to the hot tub with me. Dipping in hot tubs with the spirit? You've come a long way in a single day. I'm not saying you shouldn't follow her and offer like that. Just don't forget our little talk.
Okay. You and your storyteller friends slip into the water. It's just the right temperature for an evening dip. Plus, if some jealous shark comes along and manages to jump into the from the ocean into the pool, you're also pretty sure your killer companion could handle it. I just want to totally be to be totally clear, even though that story bore some similarities to my life, it was not about me in any way, shape, or form. Not symbolically, not metaphorically, not any other Rakoli. I believe you completely sure you were cut into pieces in your life, and so were, was the person in the story. A perfectly normal coincidence. Sure, you're on this island trapped, one might say, in the most puzzling place. Also a completely regular coincidence. And sure, his lips were blue. Your lips are blue. Really? You'd call this blue? Searching for answers, hoping to find revenge. Okay, so the similarities stop there, I guess. Coincidences? Sorry, the coincidences. Get this through your head, whoever you are. Samurai blood runs through my veins. Or, well, maybe it was, it has cold, cold, agulated now, by now. No need to sweat the details. Regardless, I'm a descendant of, I'm a descendant of noble warriors. I believe it. Thousands of years of training with bladed weapons preceded my entrance into this world. Do you know how many swords that is? A lot. You've got to figure that with that many sharp edges, a person is bound to get disconnected from a body part here or there. And truth is, the truth is, and I wouldn't typically share this, so don't go blabbing about it. I dripped that story like watching a movie in my sleep when I was just a little girl. Wow. Years before my father sunk his blade into my skin. That's amazing. Such a storyteller. I've never been able to shake it. That's a very adult story for a child to dream. Do you believe me? Yeah. I can believe that. I know we met, just met, but yes, I believe you. The way you told that story, it clearly came from someplace deep. Fool! Who taught you to trust a stranger? You're going to get hurt if you don't learn to take better care of yourself. Now have you got me wondering, do I believe you if you believe her or not? And if I know everything, because trust me, I do know everything. Don't I already know the answer to my own question about if I believe your answer to Spirit's question? Whoa, ocean air got me tripping. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to distract us both. What's important is that a certain corpsey cutie floating in the cloud of magical mist might still be waiting for you to say the right thing and free her from her puzzle box. If you believe that she is the damn it got me going on going again. Unfortunately, before you can follow this conundrum to what will surely be a mind numbing cycle of new questions, you find a certain two someone standing before you with a fresh towel ready to dry you off. Is it Claudette and nobody? Yeah, sorry kids. Oh, it's Dwight again, but it's time for bed. I might be the youngest one here, but I'm no kid. I do, however, love being wrapped up in a fresh, clean, clean towel. My mother used to help me wash my hair when I was young. She combed out all of the tangles and tied a ribbon around it before sending me on my way. I miss her. You watch as Spirit stares off into the distance, her hand gripping into a tight fist. She doesn't notice you're watching her at first. When she catches you looking, she turns away, roughly grabs a towel from Dwight, and then pushes him and Claudia aside as she floats off. Aww. So heartfelt. You head over to the campfire. The heat is comforting, comforting on this chilly night. Especially after being in a tub. I'm soaking wet, probably. Looking into the crackling embers, you, you think about Spirit's story about the prisoner in the puzzle box. If you manage to escape this place, will you leave with your life? Or has it already been taken from you? And it's just a matter of time until you make a gruesome discovery. 
before you can dwell too much on your fate, Claude and Dwight arrive. They're now fam familiar, creepy smile stretching from ear to ear. It's a bit menacing to see a smile like that lit by firelight. We must apologize for the accommodations. We weren't prepared for another guest, but we're going to make you comfortable or die trying. They throw the hand over a pillow and blanket and welcome you to snuggle by the fire. Perhaps some music will put you at ease. Just try to keep the volume at to a minimum. Our other guests aren't the types you'll want to rob of their beauty sleep. What? Ready? Away we go. As you relax and look into the fire, the radio begins to fuzz and flicker. You examine it and decide that you might adjust the dial to fix it. Let's see what's on this station. Okay. Oh my god! No matter how many th things you listen to, you still can't sleep. You decide to ask one of the killers to spend a little more time with you until you're sleepier. Who would you like to summon to your side as you lay by the fire? Um, let's go with Huntress. Huntress, are you around? I was wondering if I could get a little company. Huntress appears in an instant. You really didn't hear her coming. She's more than happy to tell you her secret for falling asleep when she's feeling restless. What is that? That looks... What is that lump in there? If a Soviet lullaby doesn't work, this special mushroom tea has always done the trick. When I'm not coating the blade of my hatchet in it to ease the passing of my victims. That's disgusting. I'm seeping it in a piping hot mug of water try it so she plunges her mush uh you do okay I, I guess i didn't have a choice there you finally start to feel sleepy except maybe this isn't really a sleepy feeling maybe you're paralyzed you try to keep your eyes open but you can't darkness overtakes you the dark voice from earlier speaks to you again it shouldn't still be as spooky by now, you've had a whole day of strange voices in your head, but this one is still unde undeniably odd. The human body is made up of 60% water. Did you know that? Of course you did. Everyone knows that. Even amnesiac video game protagonists. Well, guess what? Drink as much as you'd like. You'll never get to 100%, you hear me? Don't think I don't see what you're up to. What a weird conversation that was. You awake suddenly to see someone looming over you. When you wake up, you find Spirit sitting beside you reading a worn paperback. Oh, hey, what? Shh, shh. Clearly, she has noticed that you're awake, but she hasn't actually looked at you. Seems like she's pretty focused on that book. Shh. It seems like forever as she stares at the page before finally shutting the book and setting it down. Oh, you're awake. Yeah, I never mind. I saw you with the Huntress right before bedtime. I wouldn't tell you how to live your life. Oh, jeez. It's completely by accident. I even saw them over here. It's not like I was looking out for you or anything. I, I skipped. I accidentally pressed the button. This was simply the best reading light. And the text in my book is very, very fine print. So it's tough to read in the dark. Don't get the wrong idea. You and I are obviously mine our own business types. Not phony look out for each other as an excuse for just being nosy types. But, well, since you're here and I'm here, maybe we've got other things in common. Who knows? If we spent a little more, bit more time together tomorrow, we might find that. I don't know. We get along, and by get along, I mean exist simply and comfortably without feeling any burning desire to assassinate the other person. She's so sweet. Or not. Whatever. I don't even care. Bye. Good night. And sweet dreams to you, too, I guess. Finally alone, for real this time, maybe. You drift off to sleep again. Hopefully you're not poisoned. <laughs> That's sweet. Wait a second. Where are we? This isn't OGs. What's this music? It is. It's one of those reality show confessional rooms where all of the contestants talk directly to the camera. So that's what this is. 
I think today really went well. These were some of my first interactions with someone who isn't a parent that didn't end in bloodshed or untimely perishing in my Russian cottage. So I'm counting today as a win no matter what happens. What do I think of the newcomer? Um, do I have to say? Oh, do I do? Oh, um, attractive, mysterious. I really don't know that many other words since I was raised by my mom in the woods until she was skewered by an elf and I had to wash her entrails off my seraphan. That being said, the other three should make sure to be on their guard. She's trying to, <laughs> she's trying to fight the other killers. I don't know who this newcomer will want to spend time with tomorrow, but I for one will not let my guard down easily. Who knows about the others? Wraith, I think knows more than he's letting on about this place, but he's a hard nut to crack. Meanwhile, Spirit is just screaming all time, major buzzkill and Trapper, ugh. Where do I even begin with Trapper? He's buff, sure. But daddy issues much? Sheesh. Look, I don't need anyone. I've been perfectly fine on my own since my mother died. I eat a fine diet of raw deer, bear, and human, and I'm fit as a fiddle. That being said, something about this newcomer makes me think that I might be missing out on some huge part of this thing called life. Trapper. If I'm being honest, I want to kill just about every person I meet within a minute of meeting them. Even the few people I can tolerate, I want to see suffer for a long time before I kill them. But this person, for some reason, I would like them to continue living for now. One false step and, <laughs> well, you know, everyone calls me Trapper for a reason. And they better call me Trapper. It, I swear, if I watch this later and you list me as Evan, I'm going to kill the Chiron guy. Wraith. Yeah, today was fun. I don't want to get ahead of myself or really um invest in something that might hurt me. So I don't know. Maybe we'll just see how it goes. Or maybe they'll realize I'm not the one for them. They seem pretty smart. So that's probably what will happen. So there's a way to die before getting to this point, huh? I gotta learn to go easy on myself. Who could love me if I can't love myself? S Spirit. You know, I think I learned a lot about myself today. I always thought I was doomed to be alone for eternity. Only my creeping desire for revenge to keep me company. Now I know it. Still alive. Achievement. I passed the first day. So, um, I think I'm going to end the video off here, guys. We passed the first day, which was fantastic, and I I think I'm 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 hitting it off more and more with Huntress and Spirit. But um, I would definitely keep playing this game again to see what other routes they are for for like Trapper, Wraith, and even uh trying to find uh the Trickster, and or if there's even any other killers on this island. So. Thank you so much for joining me, no matter what your time zone may be. Have a good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Bye-bye.